Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we will go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome RBC Ambassador Corey Connors. Corey, thanks for joining us for a few minutes here prior to the start of the RBC Heritage. You're making your fifth start and you're coming off a tie for 21st last season um, in 2020. Um, just some thoughts on being back here at uh, Harvard Town. Yeah, it's really exciting uh, to be back here, <clears throat> uh, playing a few practice holes uh, out there this morning. Um, you know, feel very comfortable with the course, like you said, my fifth time here. So I think it's probably the, the place I've played the most uh, throughout my career. And uh, solid play last year, um, kind of made me like the golf course a little bit more. Uh, I got a great feel for things and, and really excited to be back and, you know, excited to be back Again, as an RBC ambassador, they do uh, a lot of great things for golf, and um, it's uh, yeah, it's an event that I've been looking forward to playing in, and uh, hopefully can uh, have a good week. You're obviously experiencing some great results right now. Just a few thoughts on your game: six top ten finishes so far this season, three of which have come recently, including last week down the road at Augusta National, which is top ten finish there. Uh, just some comments on what you're feeling good about as you're heading into the week. Yeah, feeling good, you know, about all parts of my game. Uh, been really consistent with the ball striking, and uh, the putter's been working pretty well um, the last little while, uh, getting better and better, a little more consistency there. Um, but really happy with the way I'm striking the ball, you know, hitting it very solid, particularly with the irons, um, and driving it well uh, also. So, you know, feel, feel good, have a lot of confidence in my game right now, and um, yeah, just trying to keep riding that wave of good play. Okay, well with that, we'll take a few questions and just a reminder to those on the call, if you would do me a favor and if you have a question, please type your name as Bob Weeks and Steve DiMeglio has done and I will get to you. Uh, we'll start with Bob Weeks from TSN. Bob, go right ahead. Okay, hey Corey, congrats on a nice week. Uh, I wonder if I could ask you two quick questions. One is, uh, what do you take more pride in uh, playing well last week or having a Tim Hortons donut named after you? And then the second, second question was, can you describe your emotions immediately after the round and perhaps now 48 uh, hours later? Yeah, sure. Obviously, <clears throat> you know, I was happy uh, with the week last week, but uh, I saw the Tim Hortons donut uh, picture of that this morning and that was pretty sweet. Um, not uh, not something they normally do, so I was definitely definitely pumped up about that, and I uh, wish I could uh, access one of those right now, but <laughs> I'm pretty far away from the, the closest Tim Hortons, uh, so pretty cool, and thanks to them for, for doing that. Um, definitely a pretty special moment when I, when I saw uh, what they had done. Um, as, as far as how I felt uh, right after the round on, on Sunday, I was quite disappointed. I you know, I had big expectations for the day. I just kind of had a, a slow start to the round, made some mistakes and compounded some errors and um, made some bogeys. Definitely, you know, looking back now, proud of the way that I battled back um, two under par on the, the second nine and, you know, got myself kind of back into the top ten uh, with a, a good finish. So, um, really happy with the week overall. Uh, I was definitely disappointed that I didn't perform a little bit better on Sunday, but it was a great learning experience and it was really fun to uh, you know, be in one of the final groups on Sunday at Augusta. Thank you. Okay, we're getting out of Steve DiMeglio with USA Today. Steve, go ahead. Corey, a little more on that fact. What, what is your biggest takeaway from last week, especially since it's your second top 10 at the Masters? What you said it's a learning experience. Uh, could you maybe expand on that? What 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 did you learn, and what was your biggest takeaway? Yeah, the you know one of my biggest takeaways is you know how well the course sets up for me and how much I like the golf course. I think one of my big strengths, my iron play, you know, is really valuable around that golf course, and it um, you know makes me avoid the stressful situations or the difficult spots that you can find yourself in on that golf course. Um, striking the ball solidly, I think, into the greens is, is really important. I drove it well and ironed it well, and you know, it took a lot of the, the stress um, off my game trying to save, you know, save pars or whatever. Um, so simplified the golf course as, as much as possible, and the good ball striking you know, definitely was uh, the reason for that. And, you know, it's something that I can use in the future, knowing if I you know, strike it like I can, I 
can don't have to be afraid of any of the holes. Um, I can you know take advantage of some good shots when opportunities present themselves. Um, as far as, as Sunday, um, didn't quite have the feel on the greens like I had the first few days. Um, you know, obviously uh, playing for a green jacket, which is a pretty big deal, and um, you know just wasn't uh, wasn't quite as relaxed uh, on Sunday as I was the first few days, and. Um, you know, it's something to be a little more aware of when I get back in the mix there again in the future. And, you know, you've been on a pretty good run on some pretty big stages. Uh, are you expecting more of yourself uh, these days going to the first tee on Thursdays? Yeah, I, I would definitely say I am. You know, like, like I said before, I have a lot of confidence in my game. I feel like I've, you know, been fine-tuning all parts of my game and everything's, you know, rounding nicely into shape. So I definitely have high expectations teeing it up week in and week out. And, you know, the strong results definitely, you know, help that. And um, I'm looking forward to continuing the good play, but definitely a lot of confidence and, you know, definitely know that if I play my game, do what I can, you know, play with the confidence I have and, and trust that I have in my game, I'm going to give myself a good chance. Thank you. Okay, I believe we have a question from Ian Hutchinson with Golf News Now. Ian, if you take your video off and audio on, that would be great. All done, Doug. Good. <laughs> uh, hi, Corey. Um, Corey, I'm wondering, uh, as you prepare, obviously with the Masters and still in the rearview mirror, how difficult is it to make, uh, you've got so much to process from Augusta. How difficult is it to make the transition now that you have to see heritage, or, or are you able to put that to a time when you have more time to think about it? Yeah, it's you know it's a quick turnaround, like you said. Um, definitely a lot to process from the week, but um, you know nothing new for us pro golfers. You, you gotta you know start preparing for the next week as soon as you, you finish the the previous one. So um, took yesterday off, just kind of refresh a little bit, and here in Hilton Head and. Um, you know, back uh, back to work this week, and you know, really focused uh, on what's ahead, and uh, focusing on building a plan for this golf course. So, you know, I think uh, off going to be home next week, and maybe be able to, you know, think about Augusta a little bit more then. But uh, right now, we're we're trying to dial in uh, things here in uh, Hilton Head for the RBC Heritage. Yeah, you, you talked about Sunday about how you were a little disappointed the way it went. Obviously, that front nine is what you're talking about. Um, do you fixate on that as a, um, as a negative or do you look at it as a, as a way to kind of uh, use it as a learning experience for, for future? Yeah, definitely look at it as a, a learning experience now. You know, it was, it was a big negative when I walked you know, to the ninth tee. I wasn't very pleased with how things were going uh, on Sunday, but um, definitely a good learning experience. Just a few things to be aware of and um, you know, just to make sure I kind of play with freedom, got a little, a little tightened up on a couple of the tee shots out there and, um, was, was trying to, you know, err on the safe side instead of hit, hitting good shots, which I had been doing for most of the week. So definitely, uh, looking back you know, now, a bit of a learning experience and, um, good things that I, you know, will remember for next time and things that I can be aware of. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Best of luck this week. Thank you. Okay, Corey, next question comes from Shane Ryan with Golf Digest. Shane? Uh, hey, Corey. Um, I think you're becoming more and more familiar with each passing week to the casual American golf fan. Uh, and obviously for someone like you, one of the first things people think of when they see your name is, oh yeah, he's Canadian, he's from Canada. And uh, I'm wondering if there's any sense in which you can relate to uh, Hideki as somebody who, playing in America predominantly, when people see them, they associate them with the country, and so it almost becomes like you're not just playing for yourself, but you're representing something bigger, which you know no American golfer on the tour would really have that. Uh, hopefully, I'm making sense here in this question. Yeah, definitely. You know, I um, saw some things about Hideki, you know, playing for Japan. Um, I, I definitely feel that that same you know sense of pride really to Canada and and you know all the support that I have uh, from Canada. You know, is is awesome. And, um, thinking back to when Mike Weir won the Masters in 2003, you know, he was playing for all of Canada and all of Canada was behind him. So uh, I think it's a very similar situation and it's something that, you know, I don't know any different, I guess, and being, you know, not being American to your, to your point that, 
um, the American players playing here. So um, it's definitely awesome. I love the support that I get from Canada. And I wouldn't necessarily say it, it adds pressure. You know, it's it's it feels sweeter maybe when you accomplish good things. But um, yeah, definitely proud to, to be a Canadian and love all the support that I get. And you know, I love playing. You know, for my country. All right. Thanks, Quinn. Okay, we go now to Tim with WTOC. Tim, go ahead. Uh, hey, Corey, how are you? Uh, you were just uh, talking about um, you know, representing Canada, and I just want to say I'm sorry about the RBC Canadian Open uh, being canceled this year. Does it make it any easier knowing the replacement event is going to be here in a place where you like coming that has a close connection to RBC, and are you interested in playing the, the replacement event in June? Yeah, you know, RBC does great things for golf and great things for golf in Canada, especially. And you know, it's really disappointing that the RBC Canadian Open w was canceled again, but it'll be really sweet to finally get back there next summer. Um, you know, it's, it's an event that I have a lot of fun playing. Um, as far as the, the replacement event, I, I'm not uh, exactly sure at, at this point. Um, being the week before uh, the U.S. Open, some travel uh, complications. It, might uh, might be difficult to to get to the U.S. Open in a, a timely manner, so uh, I'm not quite sure yet about the the replacement event. Um, but uh, I've heard great things about the the golf course, and um, I'm sure it'll be uh, it'll be awesome. Hopefully, uh, hopefully make it. But uh, if not, I'll be getting ready for the U.S. Open. Well, I, I was just on a Zoom call with uh, Mark Schroeder up in Toronto, oh. and it is killing all the RBC folks not to be here this week. Uh, <laughs> how is it? knowing that the people that you're used to seeing when you come to the Heritage are not going to be. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really sad. I feel for feel for a lot of them. I have a great relationship with a number of the people you're referencing. And, um, you know, they're, they're fun you know, people to be around. I know they really look forward to this event, and they do a great job. They work so hard to put on these tournaments. And for them not to be here is, you know, is, is pretty tough. But uh, hopefully, you know, this is this is the last uh, last of it. And, Things can carry on uh, in future years, and we'll have a lot more great experiences together. Thanks, Corey. Okay. Well, Corey, I think that is all we've got for you. We appreciate your time and certainly wish you good luck this week. Thank you for joining okay, us. Okay. Thanks very much. Take care.